Hello, I'm Dee Savides, and I'm a psychotherapist with Samaritan Counseling Center for the Fox Valley. Today, I would like to talk with you about stress, managing stress during the pandemic. Our brains are hardwired for negativity. That is how we survived as a species. And so that means that we pick up negative things from the environment and we hang on to them and we accentuate them in our brains. And it's natural, it's just exactly what our brains want to do. But that also means when you're in the middle of a pandemic with all kinds of anxiety and stress swirling around, in order to counteract that, we need to boost up our brains by giving us a lot of self-soothing. So today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about ways to soothe yourself and soothe your brain by giving some positive inputs, which are really critical. Now, if we want to be at working at optimum with our families, we want to be in what we call wise mind. Wise mind means there's a balance between your emotion mind and your practical mind or your rational mind. But when you're under stress or when you perceive threat, what happens is your emotion mind goes up and your rational mind goes down. It goes offline uh, almost. And um, we call this being in emotion mind. So when you have a threat like, what if I lose my job? Or what if my child fails a class? Here you go into your emotion mind. And now you don't have access to your rational brain to be making good decisions about how to handle a household situation. But in addition, what's happening is your child is also susceptible to this. So your child might also be in their emotion mind. Maybe there's something that they're anxious about and their rational brain is also not accessible to them. Now you got two people who aren't really functioning at their optimum, and this is when we often try to parent. <laughs> so no wonder it doesn't go very well. So what we need to learn is to step back and decide that before we do any parenting inter interventions, we're gonna get back into the wise mind balance that we need in order to be really functioning at our best with our kids. So I'd like to show you some tips for being in that wise mind balance. The first and the most obvious is breathe. Make sure that you are relaxed across your chest and with your face that you're not holding tension there while you're breathing. You wanna have a nice relaxed stance. What we wanna promote is belly breathing. And so belly breathing is where you engage your, your diaphragm, which is in the lower part of your abdomen. When you're breathing in, you're expanding that diaphragm and when you're breathing out, you can breathe out like you're breathing through a straw. You're deflating that, that diaphragm muscle and that causes you to have the best kind of breathing that's gonna make you the least anxious. You can teach your children to do this by having them lay down at home and put a toy on their belly and watch the toy go up and down and that will show them and teach them how their diaphragm is engaged. Another tip to show your children is to have them imagine sniffing a flower and blowing bubbles. So breathing in and sniffing the flower and blowing out. Try and see if you can get that out breath to be a little bit longer than the in breath, but that's a good way for them to practice doing breathing. Now, if you've got a teenager, one thing that's recommended for teenagers is this figure eight, and you can have them draw it on their arm. Draw a figure eight, and so you can breathe in on the upper part of the eight, and then pause as it cross crosses over, and then breathe out on the lower part of the eight. That way, if they're anxious in school or something, they can kind of do it under the table and nobody can tell. Just a nice way to self-soothe for teens. It's very important that before you enter into a conflict with a family member that you stop and take your internal temperature. Am I ready to do this? Am I escalated? Do I need to stop? And if you do need a break, it's perfectly fine to say, I'm getting too upset right now. I'm gonna give myself a timeout. I'm gonna give myself a break and I'm going to calm myself down. What great modeling that is for kids so that they can actually use that when they're getting upset with a sibling and they need to step away and calm themselves down before they try to solve a problem and maybe make a mistake. There's a few other things that you can do to promote uh, calm and de-stress and those are all mindfulness tools. Doing one thing at a time. When you're doing the dishes, have your body, mind, and spirit there doing the dishes. Smelling the smell, washing, feeling the warmth on your hands 
Doing anything mindfully is a way to de-stress. Encouraging your children to take a mindful walk with you where you go out and then you ask them to name all the sounds that they can hear or all the smells that they can smell out, out in a, on a fall day. That's a way to encourage them to be mindful. Sometimes yoga can be a helpful way to help kids ground themselves and be grounded in their body. Children at night sometimes get anxious, and so you can ask them to imagine clouds floating by, and if they're having trouble letting go of their problems of the day, you can ask them to imagine putting the problems on the clouds and watching them one by one float away. And that's a great way to help kids relax at night and de-stress. And then finally, there's the good old serenity prayer, right? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Letting go of the things that we cannot control and focusing our, our minds on mindful things, on positive things, on taking a deep breath, these are the ways that we're going to get through and be our best selves all the way through this.